Hello my friends, and welcome to another episode of Exploring Middle Earth. In today's episode we'll be looking at the Dead Marshes, their history, their location, their description, and even some speculation. Now the Dead Marshes were a swampy area filled with many reeking pools of water, and it was also the resting place for many a fallen warrior. It was along the borders of the Dead Marshes that Aragorn had captured Gollum, and a year later Gollum had guided Frodo and Sam across these very marshes. Their unsettling name was well earned, cause they bore a truly horrific history, and thus it comes as no surprise that these very horrors haunted it forever. So the Dead Marshes weren't merely the result of just one battle, in fact we know of at least three battles that occurred there. The first battle was during the Second Age, during the last alliance of elves and men. The Alliance fought in the Battle of Daggerlad, which is an area of land that is located between the Dead Marshes and Chirid Gorgor. Now, the Elven forces consisted of the Noldor Elves, also known as the High Elves, and the Sindar Elves. And these two forces were led by Gilgalad, who was the High King of the Noldor. There were also some Sylvan Elves, some hailing from Lothlorien, and the Lothlorien part were led by the King of Lothlorien, known as Amdir while the other portion of Sylvan Elves were from Greenwood the Great, which was later known as Mirkwood, and these were led by an elf called Orifer, who was their king. Now Amdir's forces, i.e. the forces of Lothlorien, were also being ultimately led by Orifer. Just a fun fact, Orifer was Tranduil's father, and thus Legolas's grandfather. Anyway, the elves under King Orifer were proud, and they refused to fall under the command of Gilgalad, and this very pride caused their fall. Before Gilgalad gave the order, the elves under Orofer's command charged, and in the fight that ensued, many of the elves perished, and Orofer himself died during the assault. What remained of his forces were cut off from the rest of the Last Alliance, and though they fought valiantly and skillfully, they were driven back into the Dead Marshes, where half their total forces then perished. Those who were part of the main force, who also fell in battle, were buried outside the marshes, but with time the marshes grew in size and eventually consumed all their graves. It was from this battle that the dead marshes got its name, though it still had more souls to reap. During the year 1944 of the Third Age, the southern kingdom of Gondor was at war with the Wayne Riders, who were a group of men from the east. They pillaged Gondorian villages and grew in strength, while at the same time Gondor's southern enemies, the Hadrim, were gathering a force for an attack on Gondor. Now the king of Gondor, King Gondorher, learned about this, and he decided to act preemptively by raising a great army to fight back this double threat. He divided his forces into two, the larger northern army led by himself, while the smaller southern army led by Aernel was a member of the royal household. Now Aernil faced off the Haradrim, while King Gondorher moved his forces to Dagolad to establish strong defense before the Wayne Riders could reach this point. However, the Wayne Riders were master horsemen, and they used chariots in battle, and this allowed them to reach the Gondorian army before they could start working on their defenses, and thus the Wayne Riders easily overwhelmed them, killing King Gondorher in the process. The Gondorian forces routed in confusion, and they scattered throughout the Dead Marshes, where they were chased down by the Wayne Riders, and there they were slaughtered. Many bodies were added to the Dead Marshes rank, and yet more were to come. For Aernil and his southern army had decimated the Haradrim, and after their victory they rushed to aid the northern forces. The Wayne Riders were caught unaware, as little did they expect a counterattack from Gondor, and thus, during their feasting and drinking, they were set upon by Aernil's forces, and what remained of the northern force that had joined him. The Wayne Riders were utterly defeated, and many of them were driven into the Dead Marshes and slain. Thus, the Dead Marshes contained the bodies of men, elves, and orcs. Now apart from these, I'm sure the marshes also contained the bodies of those who tried to journey through it, but were caught under its spell which we'll be talking about shortly. So the Dead Marshes lie to the northwest of the Black Gate of Mordor, 
and there was very little life there. Patches of dead grasses and rotting weeds were basically spread across the land. The only real remnant of life were the dead faces and bodies that loomed beneath the water surface. These were merely phantoms, however, apparitions of sorts, because the bodies in fact had long decayed and they were no longer present in the water. We know this because Gollum had once said, only shapes to see, perhaps not to touch. And this suggests that he could have tried to touch one and even eat one during one of his many journeys. Now in the dead marshes there were also flickering candle-like lights, which mesmerized any travelers, and it would cause them to reach out towards the bodies of the dead. The traveler would then fall in and join the dead's number. In the books this happens to Frodo, but Gollum pulls him away in time, while in the films he falls into water while being enthralled by a corpse, and he's then pulled out by Gollum. In one of Tolkien's letters, Tolkien speculates that perhaps his idea and description of the dead marshes could have come from his experience in World War I, particularly the Battle of the Somme. As during these trench battles, after artillery was fired, the ground would be full of potholes and basically huge holes in the ground, and these holes would obviously contain the bodies of the dead. And when it rained, you'd basically have all these holes filled with bodies and filled with water and the bodies would basically be floating in them. Now I'd like to speculate a bit, because something this mysterious naturally raises questions. So I think the first and main question is, what was going on with the dead marshes? We've established that the bodies weren't really there, and thus we can say that they didn't remain there due to abnormal environmental conditions that might have preserved them. But instead, there must have been some sort of magic at work. I feel it's quite safe and certain to assume this. Now what I truly wonder is what caused it to happen. Was it Sauron who sent spirits from Mordor to haunt the area? Which would have been just like he had done to the Barrow Downs. This would after all establish another defensive perimeter around his realm of Mordor. So I think it's quite a plausible explanation and it would be in his own interest. It's a pity that we don't know how far back the apparitions and haunting started. Because if it occurred after Sauron's defeat, such as after the Last Alliance, I'd feel like this theory is less plausible, since I can't see Sauron sending spirits there once he's defeated, it just seems far-fetched. My other theory, which I lean more towards, is that the dead marshes became the way they are, simply due to the massive number of unburied or disturbed corpses and graves that there were. That in an area so overwhelmed and consumed by death, how could any life sustain itself? I feel that it became cursed, so to speak, just due to its very dark and bloody history. Though again, this is merely speculation, and there is no certain argument for either of these theories. Something else I tend to wonder about is whether the dead marshes stay that way forever. That maybe with the passing of time, their curse or whatever it was could be broken? Or for example, if its water was drained, or something was built around it, to prevent water recollecting there, could it eventually have dried up and just reverted to a normal biome? Unfortunately, we never hear any more about it, so the best I can do is wonder. If you have your own thoughts on this, or agree with me, or disagree with me, or just want to express your opinion, please leave a comment below. I'm eager and curious to hear what you think. While doing my research for this video, I came across a website with a bunch of quotes about the dead marshes from the books, which I'll link in the video description for those hardcore fans that want to do some extra reading. We've recently started a Facebook page where I'll eventually hold polls and keep you all up to date on my videos. So if you like, check it out, I'll be linking it in the description also. As always, if you leave some suggestions and feedback, I'd also really appreciate it as it helps me know what you guys enjoy and what I could aim for to improve, without allowing my personal bias to get in the way. For example, I enjoy depicting those army movements on the map, such as I had earlier in this video. But if you'd rather have simple images instead, I'd adjust. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you don't want to miss more content such as this, subscribe to join our fellowship today. Thanks for watching guys. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we can once again explore the wonderful world and lore of Middle-earth.